NFL odds, week one, and futures, college football odds, including Heisman Trophy favorites and playoff odds, NBA odds of division winners and playoffs, Major League Baseball playoff and World Series odds, the National Hockey League Conference playoffs and Stanley Cup odds, and boxing wagers. Betting opportunities include versus the spreads and outright winners also during the game. Use our link on our website, nessp.info, the Bet Us Opportunities webpage for a 125% bonus on your first three deposits. Must be 21 years old. And remember, bet responsibly. You're going to call anyone that loves you. You're going to ask them if you can use their card to buy concert tickets because your card's maxed out. Okay. If they say yes, you get the tickets. I can't call my parents because they already think I make bad financial decisions. Well, so I think I'll call one of my friends. Okay. I'm a little it... nervous. I feel tingly What's your not answer? <gasps> Giovanna? Yes? I was on SeatGeek earlier and I saw two tickets for Olivia Rodrigo at a really, really, really good price. So. Oh my God. I maxed my credit card out by accident last week. Do you think I could use yours to buy the tickets? Oh my god, yeah. Did I what? Yeah, you got the tickets. You got the tickets. I just want tickets. We're going to go to the concert together. Jeeva, I'll call you later. I love you. Thanks for picking up. Oh my god. I'm going to see Olivia Rodriguez. Yes, thank thank you, Seeky. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the world. It's time to experience the O's on the original sports podcast. The yo chops, the yo. That's what we're experiencing. Yo, yo, that's yo. What we're experiencing. It's on. It's on. I got you. I got on. you. You know what I'm saying? Hey, chops. Yep. You ever eat McDonald's? Uh, man, it's, I used to eat it more, but I haven't in a while. Yeah, I, I'm not a big it. McDonald's guy, but once in a while I hit it up, and I always get nuggets. What's your favorite nugget sauce? Well, I do the barbecue and the sweet and sour, and I dip them in both. Uh, you don't I, mix I, them, do you? No, I don't mix them. One in barbecue, one in sweet and sour. The next nugget, one in sweet and sour, then in a the barbecue. Switch it up on them. Switch it up on them. Uh, yeah, now, I got to keep them guessing. Ideally, if I had it, I'd like to get the Polynesian in barbecue sauce with a little bit, a little, little, little bit of hot sauce in there. Now, I do like the Polynesian from Chick-fil-A. chick fil lizzle dizzles. Hey, I like that. Uh, if you get a grilled chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A, man, they got some kind of sauce that you're supposed to put on it. And my son never does. But it's, I, the, I it's the Polynesian. It. It's the Paul. Oh, think, is that what that is? I think it is. It's almost like a sweet and sour sauce. Yeah, yes. It's oh, Polynesian. so good. Yes, and, you know, Vince, and he's like, I don't want that, man. And I'm like, all right, whatever. I'll take it. Man. So he won't eat the Polynesian or he doesn't like the grilled sandwich? No, he loves the grilled sandwich. He'd rather have he won't try to than anything. Yeah. Every once in a while, we'll go, you know, like if we go up to Pittsburgh and we go to Eaton Park, uh-huh. for breakfast, he gets two two grilled chicken breasts, a side of, or, you know, fries and uh, mashed potatoes. And he don't care if it's like 10 o'clock in the morning. The boy does not like. He does not like eating breakfast. He's not breakfast. breakfast I'll be honest with you. I was never like that until recently. I was never like, and it's crazy. Now, if you ask me my my favorite breakfast sandwich, believe it or not, sausage McMuffin with egg from McDonald's. I you get the it. one with egg. See, I go straight up sausage McMuffin. I there's oh. something about their egg though. Oh, I the, I love that sausage McMuffin with egg, man. And don't forget my when I was in high school. My senior year, I worked at McDonald's and in the college, a summer job at college. Man, I, I remember to, you working at Mickey D's. Oh, man. I used to make, man, I used to make a different sandwich. And it's crazy now, and I'm being dead honest. They sell it now, the Land Aaron C Burger. Myself and a kid with high school with Joe Malachi, we used to make those. Also in the griddle, I take the pancake batter, squeeze some down, already cooked sausage, uh, sausage patty, put it in there. Squirt a little bit more pancake batter down, flip it over. So it was a pancake fat in the middle, almost like a snake. And then then we dipped that in the sausage. Now they call that, what is that, the McMuffin or whatever? Not the McGriddle. The the McGriddle. Oh, the McGriddle. All the time. All the time. Yeah. You know, I used to, when I worked there, I used to dip French fries in tartar sauce. 
That was my oh, joint. I never did that. that. Never did that. It was, pretty good. it was pretty good. I like never did sauce. that. I always like their fillet of fish. They're, they're like six yes. bucks now. Yes. You and I'll still, because it's nostalgic, I'll steal. Now, it's very rare, like I said, that I go. But if I go, I will go to McDonald's and I'll get the double fillet of fish, right? Yeah. But if you, I'll add them to put a little lettuce on it and as well tomato, because just a sandwich on its own, it's not very good and it's bland, but I yeah. love it. Yeah. But I love it. But man, I love that Joker. Hey, speaking of fish sandwiches, where was your favorite place to get a fish back home? Because they were banging no matter what. Man, I, 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 I got to go. I, honestly, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It used to be for, for the longest, I was going G and G's. Right? Okay. Okay. Now, for a short amount of time within the last two or three years, and the sure. guys are no longer there, Meatheads on Serpentine Road. Never heard of it. It all you traverses. Remember oh, okay, traverses? okay. 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 It's now Meatheads. It's now Meatheads. They had a, a killer fish sandwich. The only problem was the the fish pat, the fish wasn't wasn't very thick. Where okay. G G's had a thick one. Now I hear the bonfire back home has a great one. I've never yeah, had it. that was never my joint. I've yeah. never had it. I hear it's good though. I hear it is good. Dad used it. to go out like when I was young, pretty young, because my dad quit drinking and stuff by the time I was a teenager. And um, but he used to go out and he would come home from like the Bella Vista, which is like okay. Sandra Lynn's school of dance or whatever when we were growing yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he'd come home from the Bella Vista with, with fish on Friday nights, fish at a pizza. He'd come home like at 10, and we'd punish some food at like 10 at night. Man. <laughs> Man. I used to love chisels. Every His was Tuesday night, and he'd do the wings. And you know, what was chisels, that bar? Yeah. 200 yards from my, my house. Man, you smell that chicken wing smell through the air. Man. I used to have fun at chisels, too. Oh, man. That was Jeez. a good bar. Yeah. Hey. When you shake a snow globe, Chops, things fly all over the place, and you don't know where they're going to land. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Sports and, sports and life, honestly, they're a lot the same. You know what I'm saying? Each week, we don't know who's going to get hurt, who's going to get upset, who's going to take advantage of opportunity. What's Meriday honestly talking about? Well, you know what? You need to kick back and listen, because we're going to roll with this tonight. Right, Chops? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm ready. Let's get ready. See, it's Meriday and Chops. It's there ain't no barbershop crew. It's Meriday and Chops. So it's here we go. Packs. The eyes of Texas Chops. They was crying on Saturday, baby. It's welling up. All right. UGA came to town, knocked them off the number one pedestal. What'd you think of the game, buddy? All right. First off, I, okay. And I hated that. I went with Texas before I thought about it, before I did any research or really thought about anything, okay? Okay. Texas really hadn't played anyone. And when I'm saying that, I say that because they had Colorado State. They had Michigan. Michigan is nowhere near what we thought they'd be. They played, what was it, University of Texas, San Antonio, uh, Mississippi State's one and six. So Texas, even, even though they've been running buckshot over everyone, they hadn't played anybody. They hadn't played. And as much as Georgia might have not, they, they at least played Kentucky, who seems to be legit. Yeah. They lost to they lost to Bama. But what I'm saying is Georgia had played some tough teams. They had played some tough, tough defenses. They had been in different. They had been in some wars, Georgia. Yeah. yeah. Georgia had been in some wars. They'd been tested. They're, they've been. Georgia's been what? King of the SEC for what the last two, three seasons, regards, at you know least, what I mean? At yes. Least. And they're getting everybody's best every week. Yeah. And if I'd have thought about it, I'd have thought I would have thought about, it. you know what, Kirby and his boys are battle tested. We've never seen Sharp or, or you know, Sark, uh, Sarkeesian and what his guys were going to do. And it showed just because Ewers got off slow. And what's he do? Pull him and put Manning in. Now, I understand it was only for us, it was only for a it was only, only, only for a series. And I don't know if he was hurt or not, Ewers, but they I don't know if they replied at me and Lamar actually were talking and he didn't see where they said he got hurt, Ewers. But the fact that they pulled him, I was like, they're shook. Texas is shook. They don't know. And beyond, to me, the score wasn't as close. The game was not even as close as the score was. Not to me. 
you know, I, I, I was a little indifferent about the whole thing. And, and I agree with you pretty much the whole way, except if I'm Texas, I'm probably going to want to run with Manning here next year. So if Ewers has got the opportunity to go to the league, which they're saying he's got it, I push him that way. However, if I'm Ewers, I might be thinking about another year somewhere if I can. I can't remember if he has a, he can have another year. I think he I, can. I believe so. I believe so. I yeah. believe he does. However, because he's got to be able to beat a team like Georgia in order to stake his claim as being a top quarterback coming out. Well, it it hasn't worked great, but what was Zach Wilson went high. You know what I mean? Darnold led the country in turnovers when he went high. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's and, and and Lamar's right. Those are here's the thing. And it could have been worse because starting off, let's not forget, your boy had a lot. There were a lot of drop passes by the Bulldogs starting off. Through the whole game, they dropped passes. So it could have been <laughs> worse. It literally could have been worse. And if I'm Ewers, with the NIL, it's very tempting to stay. And even if you don't stay, you can transfer again. Yeah, that's what You can I'm transfer thinking. again. You know what I mean? So, Well, e either him or Manning is going to go. Like either yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I mean, tons. Uh, okay, so Mars chiming in. I appreciate him chiming in too because this is good. Mars said um, he doesn't need that. Tons of QBs have not had a signature win. CJ Stroud never beat Michigan and lost to UGA in the playoffs. I get it, but but Ewers also transferred and he really hasn't played anybody. I mean, you look at who. You look at who C.J. Stroud played. He played in the Big Ten. He always played big teams week in and week out. Texas it, it, was in what, the Big 12. And I get you, Mark, I get you. But let's not forget Trubisky, he didn't do much at North Carolina. After, what do you have, 11, 12, maybe 13 starts, and he got drafted high. It's 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 so different now. You know what I mean? I, I don't. Anthony Richardson was terrible. I, that's, I mean, I just I, – I don't know. To be honest with you, we he still hasn't played because he got injured. But old boy from Michigan who went to JJ uh, McCarthy, M Minnesota, he was projected. He went high, and of his wins, he went twenty-seven and one at, at Michigan. I think he only had five, six games, if that, where he threw over three hundred yards, and he had twelve or fifteen games where he threw under two hundred. Let's think about the style of football they play, though, in Michigan. They they're a run first, or, you know, a run first it, team. Exactly. He's got to go somewhere where they're going to have that mentality where he's not going to, you know, if he comes out next year, he's got to have that mentality coming out. He, he can't, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm so indifferent on him because I know. he ends up at Ohio State. He doesn't play his first year, transfers back to Texas because they offer him all that money. He's played yeah. the last couple of years. I get the whole signature win. I get it. I really do. I just think that he's not polished enough. Big dog. But here's the thing. Your boy, uh, Joe Shiesty, oh, he, where, wasn't he at OSU for a minute? Then he went to uh, Ohio State. Then he ended up going to LSU. It worked out yes. for him. Yes. Then, and, and, and when you talked about Ewers, you know what I mean, how how he transferred out, man, so many guys are doing it. And they do – I don't know, man. I, I don't I, – I don't know if – but here's the thing. Most guys, to me, don't come into the league polished. And before they gave you time to get polished and a time to get right. Yeah. Now you don't come in polished. You're, if you're a top 10 pick, you're going nine chances out of 10 to a bad team. That's why you're a top 10 pick. If you're yeah. a QB and uh, they want you to resurrect a team and you're not ready. So I, the fact you say like, he's not polished. I get that. I don't know if one year, more year will do that. I, but like, you're right. It has to be the right school. But we'll, just, we'll see, man. We'll see. I mean, you look at what happened to Bo Nix. Bo Nix left Auburn. He went out to went out to Oregon. One year in Oregon. Michael Penix. Penix yeah, wasn't the Penix, man in one year in, yeah. in Washington. You know, yeah. and I don't really think Nix is doing bad yet. I, I, You know, I don't look at Nix and say, oh, man, he's terrible. No, no, I, not at all. He's got a lot of intangibles that, that yeah. if they get the right people around him and keep building that team. Uh, the one thing I heard today, uh, which was really interesting, um, the reason Sean Payton had a problem with Russell Wilson is because Wilson didn't want to adjust to what Payton wanted him to do. 
He was so used to being successful in the system that he played in year after year after year. So that caused instant clash. The reason Peyton really likes Knicks is because Knicks is fresh out of college and he's doing what he wants him to do. You but know? that also speaks to why Peyton couldn't win. And we'll see now how he does from here on out. Bruce Arians, when he, he, he had done some things, he had some accolades as a coach, but when, man, when Brady got there, the, the Buccaneers struggled for the first seven, eight, six, seven weeks, six, seven games. Yeah. Arians stepped outside of himself and was like, yo, let's bring the New England playbook in and see where it takes us. He didn't. I understand Brady said, you know, some say the grace in the game. I get that, whatever have you. But Russ had been to two Super Bowls, too. But Peyton was like, no, 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 do it my way, do it my way. And But without Drew Brees, he hadn't been much of a coach. He hadn't done a whole lot without Drew Brees. You right. know what I mean? So I don't know if it was his well, system they were, or Drew Brees. That's the other thing they were saying, Chops. They said Drew Brees is the perfect fit for, for what Peyton, you know. Yeah. Peyton made yeah. Drew Brees, just like some people say that, you know, in an essence, uh, Roethlisberger ma made uh, Tomlin. Tom, you know? Yeah. You know, I mean, that's what you hear. But we'll see what happens with that. That, that just – Interesting to talk about that. I, I just, I don't know. Texas, Texas probably won't lose again. But no, they shouldn't. They shouldn't. If they go to the national championship, I don't know how they'll fare. You well, know, they're def they're they're definitely going to go. But now they're going to play. Some, they might get us a a, a a cream puff, and I hate to say that because he'll be one of the top twelve teams in the country. But yeah. they might get an easier shot the first game. But other than that, whoever look here, man. Whoever wins this this format championship, they're a true they're a true great team because you yeah, got to go through, run the through the gauntlet. You right? got to, I mean, the gauntlet to do this, brother. I mean, you're and, playing and, and, all the top teams. I know, I know. It's I'm I'm excited. I really am. You I don't can't know how sleep you're on about. one team that's no. going to make this no. make it in this format. And I'll be honest with you, if they decide to jump over to a sixteen team format, I'm down. Oh, I'm you and me down. both. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I'm definitely down. There's just too there's too absolutely. many college teams to only limit it to twelve. Because I'd love to see your boy. Was that how do you pronounce it? Gentry, whatever from Boise yeah. State. I'd yeah. like to see how he does against the big boys. I would love to see how he does against the big boys. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Because I think I think that kid's going to be off the chain when he gets to the league. But I don't anticipate him being a top draft pick. I don't. I just no. think. That I, you know, I could see him second, maybe third round at the latest, you know, third round. But, you know, it just that's just Mid the way the second to is. third. Only because because guys, teams aren't taking shots. And it's funny because teams are not taking shots and they're not drafting running backs in high spots anymore. And they're just basically acting like running. Why backs should they? Back. Because I'm glad. Here's why. The Giants are in the toilet and Saquon now. They de they decided to invest in their quarterback and not a running back, and they look like ass. Where the Ravens put a little bit of money in a running back with your boy Henry, and they're looking significantly different. Now you have the Cowboys who wanted to pay their quarterback and who wanted to pay their receiver and have no running game, and they're in the shitter. Running backs make a whole lot more – they're making a whole lot more sense, man, than people used to – think about some of your best teams, man. Think about some of your best teams overall. Brady always had Gronk, but they always had some nice running backs that, that back there too. And not, not great talent wise, but a nice running game. And they Manning. always played the hot hand. They, had, yeah. they always had like three guys and they played the hot hand. The hot Whoever hand. was running the ball well, that's who they played. If they weren't right. running the ball well in the first quarter, they brought the next guy in, give the next True. guy one carry, you know, till they figured they out. They had a running game, but they never just solely. Yeah, man, Brady led the team, but they always had a decent running game. Manning had Edger and James, or he had uh, and uh, your boy for the greatest show on turf, Warren. He had, you know, he has Isaac Bruce out there, but he also had Marshall uh, Falk. Marshall Falk. You know what I mean? I believe, and I don't understand why they went away from that. Since your, McCaffrey got a nice contract this year, but was Adrian Peterson the last guy to get a, as a running back to get a a great run, a great contract? He might have been. For years, I think I think Adrian Peterson was the last one. And since that, they were like some GM. We know the NFL is a copycat league, but some GM says everything is running back by committee. We don't need a good running back. And look, the 49ers went to the NFC Championship game without McCaffrey. They went to the Super Bowl. They lost with them, but they did look like a better team. 
Now, and even with McCaffrey, they were still holding their own. Now they're just having too many injuries. But How? there's a lot, there's a lot of cases where running backs adding a running back in that piece truly makes the team look better and, and, and play better because now you're a more balanced offense. Uh, you know, in, in going back to that, I mean, I bet you you could pick up three good guys for the price they paid for the price they paid McCaffrey. Oh, know? yeah. Absolutely. I mean, at this point, they're probably kicking themselves because who knows if McCaffrey will even step on the field this year? I like, know. who knows? I it's, know. it's, it, you see, hear any, somebody just asked me about that because they know I had him on. I have him three teams. I'm on three teams. I had number one pick on three teams. And and they're like, what are you hearing? I'm like, I'm not hearing anything. They're not saying a word about him. Wow. Hold on. So you had first pick and you took him over yeah. QB. Wow. Uh, I, I never take a QB till third or fourth round. Are you serious? Yeah. Well, you know what? And this year that, that would have played well because nobody's throwing for 300 yards and four times. I mean, you were the, the Lamar had a great night last night, but you're not seeing you know 300 yards and three or four touchdowns as much. You're seeing a it lot just, of 200 yard games, 220. Yeah, yeah. I get you a workout this year. I get that. Yeah, the, the defenses that. have been more. I don't know. I think across the board, the defenses have been more stout this year than ever. And and Mark, and here's the thing. Do you realize the Ravens are a top team in the, in the AFC? In the last three games, and they won, they've given up 38, 31, and 41. The Chiefs, great defense, are giving up points. It, I see, and I'm the, and I'm just the opposite, man. The way the offense and now and, and think about this. Start watching this. Where offenses, it's not always the defense, it's a lot more offense killing their own drives, drop passes, or yeah. guys running around going left when the quarterback's going right. It just and, and it bothers me because the NFL and the college football as well, it is set up for the offense. That yeah, I hate that. I hate, I, I'm, but I'm a defensive guy. I've always loved that. You know, steel I'm curtain, gonna... purple people eaters, the Ravens, the 85 Bears. I love defense. I love it. Smack them in the mouth. I love I'm it. A, I'm gonna tell you when the Ravens run into a team that has a defense because they haven't played anybody with the defense, they're gonna have problems. And I'm not, I'm not mentioning a team in the division that's going to give them problems. But well, if that team is healthy, they're going to give them problems. Here's the thing. I, and I don't know. Oh. Like last night, they were on. But that D, that offense is balanced, Mark. That offense is balanced. And I do think you, you take out, you with Henry, you take out Lamar. And you put another top quarterback in there because Lamar still misses passes. He still misses some targets. Now, of course, you worry about his legs, but the defense is giving up points. But I still think that offense is going to be able to score on a lot of people. I, I do. I think the Ravens' offense will still give you seventeen to twenty-four every game. How many touchdowns did the receivers have for them last night? The receivers. You're, you're right. The, Mark Andrews is back. And you have to you have to get that playoff. You He's have to be there all year. I had him on my fantasy team, and I had to cut him because he yeah, was. Don't forget, don't forget, he was on games. He had like five inter, He had like five receptions first four games. Yeah, because they were playing likely. He was he wasn't one hundred percent. Yeah, he's back. But now, and you have to you have to give your boy Henry. Hopefully, later in the season, he you know it'll start wearing on him his runs and whatnot. But I tell you this though, and I hate to get into our steers already. But we thought the Steelers had a gauntlet in the second half of the season. I'm not as worried about it as I was in the beginning of the season. I'm not worried, worried about, about those guys coming back from injury. That's what I'm worried about. Getting those yeah. guys back. I'd rather have them injured the first half and come back yeah. after the – Yes, you know. yes. I think Cam Sutton coming back is going to be huge, huge. Yeah. Well, Cam Sutton, and you'll also get back Dante Jackson too because yes. I, don't think, I don't think he's yeah. playing this week. They signed C.J. Henderson up from the practice squad – and that's a pretty big signing. So let's go back a little bit, though. Let's go to the, the top 25. Did you take a glance at that? Oregon sitting at number one. Is Oregon deserve to be number one, in your opinion? Yeah. Uh, Mark, well, you know me. I don't like having rankings. But if you're going to, I would say yes, because Ohio State beat themselves. That was a knucklehead play the way that game ended. It just yep. was. And there was a player to where I thought, Oregon had a little home cooking in that game against Ohio State as well. Ohio State traveled to get across the country, and they had said the teams that traveled across country, whether it's East Coast to West Coast or West Coast to East Coast, at that time were like one in six. You know what I mean? They were yeah. everybody was getting smacked around. I always State. say that it's hard to go from the West yeah. to the East and the East to the West. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So because they're undefeated, because they did beat Ohio State, man up. I, I do. I say give them number one. But let's be honest. If they play, if you put Ohio State versus Penn State, Penn State versus Oregon, because Penn State's what, number three, three right now? They're number three. I'll be honest with you. If I put Penn State against Ohio State on a neutral field, I'm going with Ohio State. Oh, 100%. I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, I, that's the one that really stuck out to me is, and the Big Ten is highly represented. Between Penn State, Oregon, and Ohio State, they're represented in the top five. But I, I let's put it this way: I'm I'm liking the top five. I didn't go much past that, only because a lot of it will figure itself out. But I did like the top five. I, and I, I know we no got a lot. We got a lot of friends that are Penn State people, and they think, "Ah, oh, you're so anti Penn State." Blah blah blah. They they say that shit to me, and I'm. It's not that I'm anti Penn State. Okay, I don't I don't even have to be pro Penn State because I I'm not a Penn State person. I didn't go to Penn State. Yeah. Just because they live, just because they're a Pennsylvania team, and we were born and bred in Pennsylvania, doesn't mean I yeah, gotta be absolutely. a Penn State team. Okay, absolutely. I don't care for their coach. I think he's a snake. I don't like what he does. I don't think he has a say so in anything. And I just, I'm, I'm not a fan of his. Do I want them to lose? No, I don't want them to lose. Do I want to see their kids be effective and go on and have great NFL careers if they get chosen? Hundred percent, I do. But I don't like their coach, and I will never throw my support behind him until they get another guy in there. I was good with Bill O'Brien. I was fine with him when they, when they brought him in. I just – this guy uh, – and there are so many people who, who get it, but yet they gave him – I don't think Mike Doc, he can't join us tonight, but I don't think Mike Doc is a fan of Franklin either. And, and here's the thing, Mark. I'll be honest with you. It, Miami is 7-0. and do, do you think they would challenge – Georgia, Ohio State, Oregon, if they played head up. No. See, I don't I that's what I'm saying. So no. once I get past five, no, but I could see my, pick them. I could see a team like Miami beating Penn State. I could see that yeah. happening. I could see that happening because you see, I see a fast defense giving Penn State problems. Yeah. Uh I will tell I'm you not this. A fan of Aller. Before I'm, we I'm, go I think in Aller misses passes when he shouldn't. Um before we even get further, I will tell you that I watched uh, some of the Miami game this past weekend. I, I've caught bits and pieces of them along the way, but I literally sat down and watched them. I am enamored with Cam Ward, dude. Like, I, I'm enamored yeah, with him. Yeah, yeah. He's what out of town. Arm, you know, your dad always said I had a shotgun for an arm. That boy can throw. Yeah, he can. Holy he shit. can. He was moving he full can. speed to the left. Brought the 20, 25 laser. yard on. Yes. Bill was running across the back end of the. And he boom! He threw him a yes. laser right in his hands. Yeah. Frozen like, rope. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, just couldn't believe it. I was just I'm, enamored with that. I know. I'm looking at Tennessee, right? Yeah. Next week is going to be. Well, no, they got the bye week, so that bye week will help them because they have Tennessee. They have Kentucky next. That Kentucky could be. Kentucky could have been a trap game, but you got the bye week, so you should be good. Because they're coming off a high beating Alabama. But other than that, they haven't really played a whole lot of guys. But yeah. they're six and one. They do what they're supposed to do. Yeah. So honestly, you mark, I like I said, Barbara, I paid attention to the top five. Once you're getting me past that, I'm like, whoever you put in there doesn't matter. Now, I'm excited to see how these teams shake out at the end of the season, who's the top 12 and how that goes. You know what I mean? So we'll, hey, we'll did see we, that. Did we not? I think you and I called that Alabama over ten or that Tennessee over Alabama upset. Yeah, I and, and I called that. And here's the thing: right now, technically, right now, Indiana, and it's tricky because they were rolling. They lost their starting QB. Not a guy came in, did well. He didn't have to light it up, but they still won impressively. You know what I mean? But I'm interested to see what happens from here on out with Indiana because they're rolling. They beat. I mean, they still they have Washington, who's got a new coach. The only real thing they have, they got Ohio State coming up at Ohio State. But if they could go one, two losses, uh, it's going to be rough. But I'd, I'd like to see, I'd like to see Indiana get into that playoff. I really would. Um, I'm a little disappointed, <laughs> rightfully so, though. Seeing teams like uh, uh, Army seven and zero, Navy six and zero, uh, Pitt six and zero, uh, BYU, Iowa State. Um, you know, even my well, Miami's up there. But a lot of those teams seem to be buried behind some of these teams that just aren't that impressive to me. I mean, I don't know. I, I will say that Alabama at five and two, 
sitting at number 15. If Alabama played Army, Navy, Pitt, uh, any of those teams, yeah, yeah, they'd yeah, yeah. blow them out. I get it. Different but, style but, of football there. Yes, but here's the thing. Don't forget, Barbara, here, it also goes back to a lot of these teams were ranked before the season started, so we don't have losses, and Navy, Army – they're not going to get respect in the poll. They just, no. they're just not because of who they play. So regardless of what they do, they'd have, I remember it was years and year, years ago, I want to say late eighties, early nineties, air force ran the gamut. And I still don't think they cracked the top 10 or they weren't as high as they should have been. I can't remember the year that it was, but it was air force. And that, that really stuck out to me that the, the, the just the, the, the military schools don't get the love they should to me, no. but this is a firm belief case in the aspect of, when you don't get ranked at the beginning of the season, you have so much harder, more work to do. It once is. you start rolling, you know what I'm saying. Once you start, because think about it, man. Like I said, they're six and zero, and regardless, regardless of who they are, have played Army or Navy, you have them twenty four or twenty three and twenty four. They're undefeated. You know what? Put them up there a little higher. You know what I mean? They've earned that. At least let those kids walk around, beat their chest a little bit. They're undefeated. Regardless of who was on their schedule, they played who they had to play, and they beat. They uh, won. You know, that's always been a thing to me because people be like, ah, you got an easy schedule. You know, when I was a head coach at Rockville High School and uh, down the road, everybody's like, ah, you're seven and three, but look who you played. I played who was on my schedule. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. just because they lost to those teams in previous years, that didn't mean anything. Now I'm playing those teams. We're going out and winning. You play yeah. who's on your yeah. schedule. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not advocating for them to be in the top six, top five. I'm not advocating for that. No. But you could put them a little. I mean, if you put them in 19, 20, 18, some give them a little bit of respect. You know, they're undefeated. You have Illinois. I get to okay. Real quick, Illinois is ranked significantly higher, right? Right. Illinois has a loss, and they lost to Penn State, but they have played no one. They no. played Eastern Illinois. They played Central Michigan. You know what I mean? They're they're not they're not playing world beaters either. But when they start getting looked at and higher ranked and higher looked at than Navy and Army from the <laughs> beginning of the season, they're going to get the higher accolades faster just because Army already started down here. They started lower on the totem pole. I didn't realize there's six weeks at least of regular season college football left. At least six weeks. Yes. At least six weeks. Yes. It, uh, you know, uh, it kicks off with a really good – uh, primetime game on Thursday, Pitt plays Syracuse. They, they, I mean, it's our squad, so we'll watch it. You know what I mean? But what are, where, where's, I don't even, where is Syracuse in the national landscape? I, they, yeah, they're not even ranked. No, so but it'll be, it'll be a game five for and us. one, though. Yeah. 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 It'll be a game for us. Five and one. Boys, Western PA boys. We'll definitely want to see that. You know, you know I, mean, I mean, that's going to be a good one. Hey, Choppers, let's jump back over to uh, baseball. <laughs> Two historic franchises. You you phrased that right for me. Two historic franchises. The bright lights of Hollywood versus the city that never sleeps. Uh, I love the way you put that together. And you asked me who I got. Um, I probably will ride with the Yankees. I think they have a more potent lineup. However, I could see this World Series easily going to seven games. And I, I could see it being a coin flip uh, at the end of the day. I could see somebody coming out, winning two, going back, winning two, you know, just going back and forth. I could see that happening. Uh, the pitching for both teams has been mm, okay. You know, I don't want to say it's been that strong, but it hasn't been suspect either. Uh, I think the hitting is starting to come around for the Yankees right now. John Carlos Stanton was ripping the cover off the ball. Now, I will say that the kid that won uh, uh, the National League Championship Series MVP, um, he's not somebody you would expect to win it. Uh, his name is es escaping my mind right now. But it's not somebody you would expect to win it. And that's always a good thing for a team. You know, you would think, oh, Shohei, yeah. first, first playoffs, you know, he's going to – I mean, the Yankees can pitch around him if they want to. You didn't get a great Mookie Betts. You know, but then again, you didn't get a great Aaron Judge till towards the end of the series. True, so true. it's it's going to be an interesting series. Uh, this is what this is what television wants. This is what Major League Baseball oh, wants. Yeah, without want, question, without it, question, two biggest fan bases probably in the country or in the world, maybe. Um, 
three hundred and I, I read today three hundred and six. I think I sent it to you. Three hundred and six million dollars is the Yankees' payroll. Three oh six. Can you imagine that? I mean, well, honestly, I watched. I watched the wild card in divisional hard. Right now that it is, and I didn't watch much of the NLCS or ALCS. Yeah, I knew the I knew the I knew the rich teams were going to win. I I I, and, and I knew the rich teams were going to win, and and that's why. I'll be honest with you, man. I'm not looking forward much to this World Series. I hate to call me evil empire, you know, like they used to. But when you buy championships, and I hate to say it that way, because other no other teams can't do it. But you know, just man, I wish there was some parity in in Major League Baseball. I do. They're never going to have it until they have a spending floor. Until they force teams, you know. And I was looking for the number I wanted to share with you. Uh, Let me see where is it. I know I put it out there. Uh, shit. What were you looking for? Uh, the number, the three, how much the Yankees payroll was and what the, the Dodgers payroll was. But but let's face it, those teams, they don't care about a luxury tax jobs. No, 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 no. You can tell me about a luxury tax all you want. They have TV contracts. They have fan bases. They have everything. But they could spend whenever they want and still make more money than than they know what to the, do with. The Yanks is 306 million. The Dodgers is three twenty million. The league average is one hundred fifty million. Yeah, How now, that yeah. The don't forget the Yankees have their own net. They have their own network, the Sunshine Network. They have their own yeah. network. So it's a, it, more to me. You're right. Huge fan bases, and I understand. You know, Yankees fans. There, you're either yet Metro Yankees fan if you're from New York. The Dodgers going back to Venezuela, you know, Fernando, uh, you know, and those, those guys, Gar- Garvey, you know. But it's just now they're just – and Tommy Lasorda, now they're just buying championships, buying yeah, their way through. because today. baseball's letting this happen. Yeah, yeah. They let it happen. They don't want to deal with it. You know, try and reach out to somebody in Major League Baseball. They won't get back to you. Send an email. <laughs> send it, make a – and here's what I don't understand. You being a baseball guy, maybe you can help me a little more to understand this. Baseball has so many unwritten rules. If you hit a home run against a pitcher, don't show them up. Right. If, you know, certain things that aren't supposed to be done, whatever have you. However, knowing that te- knowing that teams buy championships or their payroll is way out of whack, they don't complain about that sort of stuff. Baseball has a bunch of unwritten rules that I don't understand. That they say they want to keep the integrity of the game, whatever have you. They refuse to vote in McGuire, Barry Bonds, you know, Clemens in the Hall of Fame because of what they've done. They would never vote in the Pete Rose because of what they've done. They're supposed to have an honor system, whatever have you. But teams are buying championships, and that seems to be okay. That, I don't get that. That doesn't set well with That's it. not integrity. That's not integrity. What, what's a luxury tax, Chops? What's yeah, a, what, I, you know, like what is that? Oh, if you spend over two hundred million dollars, you have to pay a fraction more. Yes, oh, so and if you already have two hundred million, but I said no. I was saying baseball acts as though they have integrity by not voting these guys in. You have the unwritten rule you're not to. Remember, baseball gave your boy Ken Griffey the kid a problem because he was wearing his hat backwards during batting practice. Yes, they want to act as though they're so high and mighty and they're so great and they stand on business and they stand on morals and ethics. But yet you let team you 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 let organizations buy teams. Miss me with that. Miss me with that. I really have no respect for what baseball does. And no, I I, 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 no. I just I, for me, I love the sport. I do. I love watching the sport. I love listening to it on the radio in the summertime outside. You know all that kind of stuff. But as long as you're letting an owner just tank every year because he's yeah. making money as long as you're letting other owners buy a championship i don't think it's right i don't think it's fair but you know i have no say so uh, my only say so is i don't go to games don't, I don't go to games i don't know why i don't know why fans keep doing that and you know in in other parts of society you stand up and fight for the week if you see somebody getting bullied you step in this that whatever and, and i understand they're not getting bullied and they could say no but like our pirates, the tickets are so cheap that people that normally wouldn't be able to go get to go. Or when the Yankees come to town or good players, they get to go see them. But why? And again, nobody, like I said, MLB won't get back to you. Why won't the league step in 
and fight for the fan and tell the organization, either sell this team or make them competitive. Make them – they're not doing either. And the, the owner's sitting back, collecting, making money, and fans keep going. And I hate that they do, but there are some well, people that say, if these tickets weren't so cheap, I wouldn't be able to go. I, I mean, I only go to uh, – most of the time I only go to minor league games. Now, yeah. we, have, we have a team in town here. Vincent and I will go up to Harrisburg. You know, and and there's a reason for that. You know, I, I didn't go to a game in Pittsburgh this year, and I usually try and go to one, but I'm done. I didn't buy a yeah. pirate hat. I, I usually get a new hat every year. Yeah, no, you can't support them. You can't. Well, I, I can't. I just can't. You know, and I, I read or I saw a podcast today with Roddy Telez. You know who Roddy Telez is, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the dude got did dirty. Yeah. He took the high road. Yeah, I mean, I, I was shocked. That he was like, well, I get it. It's a business, you know. Well, he if he wants to get back into the league, he has yeah. to. Yeah. Because Perfect. I mean, uh, you if even if you're right as an athlete, but you speak out against your owners, who's going to hire you? Nobody's going to hire you back. And then he made a comment like he's going back to Pittsburgh, and I was like, what? What is wrong with you? Like, why would you even? Why would you even consider doing that the way they did you? Yeah. You know. So. All right, Chops. In the battle of the old birds of Pittsburgh, 35-year-old Russ Wilson versus the old grumpy man, Aaron Rodgers, uh, Wilson came away with the dub. Okay? He was, yeah. I don't know. Well, you know. And here's the thing. In boxing, George Foreman, and I can't think of who Foreman fought. I can't remember. It was it Foreman? Holy, I can't remember who it was, but they called it the geese. Foreman and Larry Holmes, they called it the geezers at Caesars, right? And yeah. that's what it was, the old birds in Pittsburgh on this one. It was the old birds in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Old Russ Wilson, old Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. And you know what? Like I put on Facebook, man, in social medias, I didn't – and I said it on here. I didn't agree with the decision. I don't understand how you sit field. No, he wasn't spectacular, but he was winning. And as Herm Edwards says, you play to win the games. Yeah, he was exactly. winning. Yeah. Never been done before, sit a guy four and two. And yes, Russ, when he started out, man, he looked bad. He was missing throws, and I'm up here screaming, yank him, yank him, yank him. Yep. Tomlin, that's why he gets paid the big bucks, and I don't. That He stayed with him, and there were still some passes he underthrew, but I love the fact that the offense went downfield. So here I ask you this. Regardless if it was Canada and what we've seen so far in the first six games with Arthur Smith, this offense would not go downfield. So are you telling me even with Fields, they're saying what we heard and what everybody said with him in Chicago, he can't throw the ball past 12, 15 yards accurately because they weren't going down the field as much as they did. On Monday night or Sunday night, they went down the field. They went down the field where they weren't doing that with Russ. And they're in the building. Did they know something? They didn't do it with Trubisky. They didn't do it with Pickett. Did they know something we don't do? We got these guys, and now they're in our building. They can't I, throw a bomb. They can't throw a fly route. They can't throw a nine. I think I don't, the pro I don't think the problem is they can't throw it. I just think that Russ had autonomy like nobody else has had, and he got to call his own plays. And when he saw the mismatches and the coverages, he got to make decisions that helped him to, to thread the needle a little better. And, I, I you know, we just saw – we saw a rusty guy out there put up 37 points. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, I, I, my, my feelings are once he gets a feel for this, oh boy. You now know? I, we got, we got to keep it a buck. We got to keep it 100 the whole way through. Yeah. Let's not forget the jet defense and defensive backfield was down to like their fourth DB. I don't care because Russ hadn't played no preseason, whatever. So this is what he needed. I do tell you this though. Once he gets more first team and live action reps, those bombs and nice fly routes that Pickens was running, that Pickens had to wait for, come to by the he's got the Giants, then he got the bye week. After the bye week, I'm calling he's going to be hitting Pickens in stride. He's going to be hitting Pickens in stride. Now, now after that performance, now I'm feeling go getting a decent number two. Before I wasn't, but now I am. So do you, okay, decent number two. Cooper Cup's on the market. Cooper Cup's on the market, and the Rams said, <clears throat> we'll give, we want a number two, and we'll eat salary. Okay, fine, whatever. But Cooper Cup has played 23 of 41 games the last 
I up know. to this point over the last right. couple of years. Okay. 23 or 41 games. He's 31 turning 32. Yeah. His salary the next two years counts about eh, close yeah. to 20 million per on the books, depending on what they eat. All right. What do you do? What do you do? Do you take a flyer on this guy? Do you offer a third with the case that look, he's been banged up. He's played 23 of 41. He's not the guy that won uh player of the year three years ago. He's not the guy that was MVP of a Super Bowl. You know, we're, we're willing to take him for a third. Honestly, if I do that, if I do that, I'd go out and look, I'd look for Michael Thomas. From this the old guy, from, he's out of the league. He's a free agent, but just right. hear me out. Just hear me right. out. Thomas has only paid, what, 12, 14 games. He hasn't played a full season over the last three seasons. Yeah. He's got, you're not asking him to do a whole lot. He'll come damn near dirt cheap. I would do something like Michael Thomas or be that before I do a Cooper Cup. And the only reason is because Cup is going to have some stipulations and you're going to have to eat some money. You know, you can get Thomas cheap, and Thomas is about the same age. Thomas has got to be healthier. He hasn't played a full season. He's been let what 12, 13 games, 14 games in three years. Three yeah. years. I'd, I'd reach out to Thomas because I can't say, like you said, Cup is not the guy he was years ago. He wasn't. No. He can't stay healthy. I don't see it. And now at this point, are you looking for a slot? Or are you looking for a wide? Well, that's the a other thing. Receiver? And do you where do you play? Cooper Cup, he plays a slot, no, predominantly. But yes. but he runs his routes are uh, field stretchers. He's not a short route runner. So you you've got some things to think about here. I do think that if that team wants to go forward, speaking speaking from an omniscient point of view, I think if that team wants to go forward, they sure as hell have got to go out and get a a proven receiver from the league. And if Michael Thomas is the is who you yeah. want, then you go get him. Would you trade for now, Mike Williams now? Well, you know, and there, there's another thing. But but see, also, as you mentioned with Cooper Cup, look at the offense damn near like the West Coast with McVay, the offense he came from. That's not what the Steelers run. So, it, but if this running game can take off, if this running game can take off, that opens a whole lot up behind the linebackers. So, but it, it's just the money that comes with Cup. In a second round, I don't know. I, I don't know about that. I don't know. When you can get... Now, I understand Randy Moss was coming from Vegas and the Raiders, but I'll never forget when the Patriots got Randy Moss for a fourth round. Now you want a second round for Cooper? I can't see it. And the money? No, it's not going to happen like that. I can't see it. I can't see it. I can't see it. I can't and they're not going to trade him. Well, they might trade him to Kansas City, but what does Kansas City have to give him? I like know. they need, they, yeah. you know, what their did money's tied up. Jets just get a third or a fourth round for, what did they get for Adams? The Jets. Uh, a third. A third. A third. I it was. Yeah. I, I can't see you getting more than that. I cannot yeah. see you getting a second for Well, maybe that's round. just a place that they, they put their foot down at to, to work with, to start yeah. with. You know. Uh, let's move into this, Chops. What's next for the Cleveland Browns? Deshaun Watson's gone. That's it. Okay. Um, this might be the way that they get out from and underneath that contract, to tell you the truth. Because that was a pretty, pretty significant Achilles. Achilles tear right there. I mean, he just, you could tell as soon as he stepped. But they got Chubb back, and Chubb looked okay the second half of the game for a guy who hasn't played since last year around this time. Yeah, when he busted um, that knee up. They're going to bring in the, what's the kid's name? Uh, Donovan Thompson, Dar Darian Thompson. Uh, oh God, I can't think of his He has a three name. He played at UCLA. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. They're bringing him in. They're not going to play Jameis Winston. They want to bring in that young cat. Um, I think they have anticipations of him taking over that role. So, but he brings them the dimension of, of being able to run the ball. Yeah. yeah so yeah. are they going to build an offense like they have, or at least try to build an offense like they have over in uh, Baltimore? Is that what they're thinking? You know, they Honestly, traded Amari Cooper. Who I who's, think Stephen, I don't I don't think Stefaniak's a good coach. Even last year, he's he's not a smart coach, and I say that because last year before Chubb blew out his knee, it said that the Bengals or the Bengals, the Browns at one point were like one and or five and one when Chubb has twenty carries or more, but in the other ones they were like zero oh and three. Yeah, and I'm like Stefaniak, why are you not running this guy? 
And yeah. the fact that you're not going to bring in Winston, once Winston had his surgery, he was a better QB. Even yeah. last year, for the he was a better QB. Now he can actually see. But if you want to bring in Dorian Thompson Robinson, okay. If you if that's who you want to play, Thompson fine. Robinson, that's what it is. Fine. So if the, from UCLA, if that's who you want to play, fine. So be it. Do your thing. I don't. But I also had a problem with the Brown fans because so did was, I. But, but I hate to say this because when. You knew he had all these allegations, whatever. I mean, I only call them allegations because he hasn't been convicted, whatever, but he had his allegations. You still wanted him on your team. You guys weren't boycotting. You weren't not going to the games. You were still going to see your Browns. And if they won or he threw a touchdown, you cheered. As soon as he gets hurt, now you're booing and bad talking because they're losing. You can't have it both ways. That's what bothered me about the fans. Now, if you want to boo a guy who has been playing poorly, Okay, fine, so be it. But then he gets hurt and you're still cheering. Mark, fans have lost all respect for athletes. Everything is changed. There's no respect anywhere nowadays. Anywhere nowadays. Regardless if it's how people talk to teachers, talk to students, or to students talk to teachers, how police talk to civilians, how civilians talk to police. There's no respect anywhere anymore. Before you, you know what I mean? So at least someone would at least try to give you respect. Now they don't even, it's just disrespectful all the way around. So fans don't care. And the way they acted to me was just, it was, it was, it was terrible, man. Cleveland. I say terrible because if you'd have been booing him all year and he didn't have these allegations, fine. But you kept showing up to the games knowing he had these allegations. You cheered when he threw a touchdown pass and you hate these allegations. Now he gets hot and you want to, you want to, or he gets hurt and you want to act like he's the worst thing since sliced bread. He's the same man he was two weeks ago. You didn't boo him then. And that's what bothered me. No, I'll say, I'll say it now, like I've been saying for the last couple of years since he went there, I can't believe that the owner's wife signed off on bringing him in, whether he was convicted or not. Like my wife would never sign off on something like that. Never. Mark, there's a lot of things. Uh, there's a lot whether of it's that. smoked or spire chops, that's how yeah. I feel about it. Okay. Whether it's all true or not. Yeah. Like I said in our text, there was what, 32, 34 women, something like that? No, I, there's no way you can convince me he's guilty of 34. But I know there's, even if it's only two or three out of 34, I know there's something somewhere. It has to be. Because there's no way. Because here's the, here's the thing, Mark. There are certain terms or certain things you can be branded with that you can never get rid of. Right? And a yeah. sexual offender is one of them. Sexual yeah. assault is something you never live down. Never live down. And 100%. at some point, why do you not stand up and fight and scream? I didn't do it. And I'm fighting this. You know what I mean? Like yeah. your boy Ariza. Remember your boy Ariza, the punter, who said at Arizona State, I didn't rape that girl. And the bill still ended up cutting him. Then when it came out that he wasn't even there, he was trying to counter sue her as he tried to fight it the whole way. You got to st- And I hated the fact that he just collapsed and Listen to me. If you're innocent, I don't care if you've got 47 million gazillion dollars in the trunk of your car. Don't just give someone a thousand just to make them go away. Because there are certain things you cannot live down. And a rapist and a sexual predator is one of those things. Everybody looks at you differently. Everybody. Everybody. Hey, uh, Reckless, our guy from uh, from Peak One Sports, the, the, he, he jumped on with us a while back. Uh, he says, Deshaun played poorly and he sexually assaulted dozens of women. The ownership of the Browns are out of touch. In Browns groups, they never wanted him and booed him from the beginning, just more noticeable when all the cameras are on him. So Hold, hold, hold on, Kenny Mays, but, but peep it. Remember when we, the Steelers, signed Michael Vick? Michael Vick got boycotted outside of – outside, and that was on the, and on the news. Now, salacious behavior in conflict sells more than ever. If there were large groups, you can't between I don't care if it was on somebody's cell phone. If there were large groups protesting Deshaun, I don't know how none of that got played. And the fact that people were booing, you had to be there to pay your money to boo. Hell, do you remember when e- Kaepernick was kneeling and people were calling direct TV? I want my money back. Yeah. But this guy has assaulted women and they didn't see that's what bothers me. That's what bothers me. What people have issues with and what they don't. And is is May says the the group was out of touch. The Brown the, the Browns group was out of touch. There's no mistake in people not showing up. You can't be out of touch. If people don't show up, right? And they still showed up. That's what bothered me. 
That's what bothered me. Chops, we're down to our last five minutes of the show. This is unreal. I know. There was so this much. We didn't know. We're still rolling. Hey, uh, Mike Evans, milestone, 100 TDs, although he pulled his hammy and he's out for a while. Yes or no, Hall of Famer? Oh, Mark. I'm, I'm going to be undecided. And here's why. And here's real quick. With me, if you ask me if you're a Hall of Famer, I, that 100 catches snuck up on us, that 100 TDs. But did you ch- – I don't want to say did you change the game, but were you head and shoulders above the people you played with when you played? To me, the the, the Hall of Fame is getting very much watered down. Very, so very too. much watered down. I think so, so, too. There are a lot of guys that are good, very few that are great, even few that are less – that are Hall of Famers. I think he so had too. a great career, but I truly have to look, man. But just off the rip, I don't consider him a Hall of Famer because, yes, he was big to the the, the Buccaneers, and he's played for that one team. But I don't think of him, oh, man, we've got a game plan for Michael Williams. He disrupts the game like Terrell Owens did, like Jerry Rice did, like, you know, Randy Moss did. No, he's not. I don't remember him that way. I don't. We'll you see don't what happens with his career. Like when his career concludes, we'll see what happens. Hey, how about this one? Uh, NBA preseason doesn't catch my eye very much, I'll be honest with you. But Bronny James, man, uh, he shouldn't even make that roster. No, he shouldn't have. And the fact they're talking about, well, it's got to be natural for him to get into the flow of the game. The fact that we know he should not, he is not, there's no way is he the sixth best man on your team. So he shouldn't be the first one off the bench, number one. Number two, The fact that you guys are talking about this and the media talking heads are even letting it be known and it got out of Lakers camp that, yeah, we're playing them in, and hopefully if it's in the flow of the game by early to second quarter, that already lets me know you guys have a game plan. The fact that you you fired your coach to bring in Braun's best friend damn near, basically because he was doing a podcast with him, I don't watch the NBA. I watch a little bit of the playoffs, and that's it, but it's because of things like this. It's because of things like this. I get it. First off, he should have went to the G League, but if you want to put him on a squad, okay, whatever. But now the biggest thing you're making it about is he gets to play with his dad. But he's not worthy. Griffey was worthy to play with his father. The kid was worth – there was not a question. Braun is not there. He's a – oh, he averaged less than 10 points a game his senior year – or not a senior, his last year in college – this he only had G- one year at college. Yes, he's G League at best. And I don't know if he'd be an all-star at the G League. He's not ready, man. He's not ready. No, that was just, uh, oh, we're going to appease LeBron thing. Absolutely. I'll be glad when he's gone for my Lakers. Uh, the yeah. last thing, the last thing, the New York Liberty won the WNBA. Thoughts on the league turning the corner? And speaking of the league turning the corner, and this is more of where I want to go with this, Angel Reese complained recently about not being able to afford her rent based on her salary from the WNBA. Angel Reese's rent was $8,000 a month. Eight. I don't know if you hear me. $8, yeah. $1,000 yes. a month. Yes, but hold on. Let's keep it in perspective. Most of her money, don't forget, they offer Caitlin Clark more. She Caitlin Clark makes almost $20 million in endorsements. All these stars make significantly more in endorsements than their, than their contract. But it, it is crazy, Mark, because you said as they turn the corner, the last time I checked, and I'm being dead serious, I think the WNBA was still on course to lose double-digit millions this year. Oh, double-digit millions. So as much as we think Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, and all these girls brought eyes to the game, they still lost money. And no disrespect, call it what you want. Mark, I don't think I watched an entire quarter of – I know I didn't watch an entire I half of it. any WNBA game. I followed it, but I didn't watch it. No. You know, I didn't watch so, it. And again, we're, we, we're complaining. These girls are making their money on endorsements. Hell, for the big three, your boy Ice Cube offered Caitlin Clark five million. That's significantly more than she made in the WNBA. So I get where Angel Reese is saying Angel Reese is saying that. But ladies, keep it. Let's be honest. If you're losing money, nobody's tuning in to watch you. There's no money for you to get paid more. That's bottom line. The NBA is like, running funds the whole league anyway. Yes, the NBA that's why girls go overseas. You know, so hey, chops, tell them where they can find you, my man. Man, come on now. You know, uh, at the, on the X at the real big chop seventy nine on the gram, big chops eight two four, and on what what is the where am I on TikTok? It is big chops seventy nine, and on of course on here on the uh, Facebook, my government, Michael Gregory Mills. You can find your boy. 
I'll, I'm there. I'm you find me. Give him a shout out for your new show. Oh your man, new, Haymakers your little spinoff. Haymakers and submissions. Yeah, it's a sister show, a spinoff of the original sports podcast. I'm a big combat sports fan, so we get into the combat sports there. It's literally nothing. Boxing, MMA, and wrestling. Not WWF Hulk Hogan wrestling. We're doing the Greco Roman and freestyle wrestling. Love it. Oh, yeah. Tune in. We're on Roku every Friday night at 10. Hey, connect with us here on the Original Sports Podcast with Mark Maraday and the Barbershop Crew by checking out our webpage, podpage.com, Original Sports Podcast with Mark Maraday. That page is now got an owner of it who will be doing hopefully amazing things. We are going to upgrade that page to make it uh, even more sexy to look at. Um, you can also find us on Facebook, X, and Snapchat. All of those are OSP with MM. <clears throat> you can follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Twitch, and YouTube. All of those are original sports podcast. Um, big shout out to our to our networks. Let's talk sports, uh, sideline sports, uh, ESEN, Elite Sports and Entertainment Network, who we have their link tree already in our show notes. So make sure you check them out. Uh, Manning Media and Peak One Sports Network. We've been doing a lot of stuff with them too lately. Uh, let us know if you have any comments, questions, suggestions for, for future guests, or you just want to holler at us by jumping on. We love having people on here. We're actually looking into doing a little call-in show, which would be a lot of fun for us. Oh, uh, you can email us at originalsportspodcast at gmail.com. Thanks to Steve Medley for doing the voice intro, Charlie Hodgson for doing the music, and check us out next Tuesday to Experience EO on the Original Sports Podcast.